All right, so welcome to our short boxing and benchmarking and general playing around with the Dell Latitude 7390. So there's the box. Let's crack it open and see what we get. Let's pull this out first. So typical uh, AC adapter, nothing interesting. USB type C. And in here will also be a North American plug, which uh, let me just open this up for you. There we go. Yeah, North American plug because that's where I am. Okay, so first we have health and safety, warranty garbage, and the 7392 in one. So this is the one that folds over, keyboard folds over. Yeah, let's just take a quick look. Yeah, nothing interesting here. Just the same old stuff. Telling you what the ports are and uh, so on and so forth. All right. So let's take a look at this. That's uh, it's very light. I believe it's uh, just under three pounds. This one I ordered with a backlit keyboard. Uh, of course, it's the touch screen. And there we go. That's the unit. Now, boy, that is nice. So let's just open this up, see what we get. So you can take a look at it. Um, it's a looks like a smaller keyboard. It looks like a 95% keyboard, although uh, it looks fine to me, but it does look a little bit smaller than usual. We have a headphone jack. We have a, an SD card slot. We have a USB 3, uh, what Dell calls super speed port. Uh, we have a Noble 3. This is just a lock, uh, if you haven't seen that before. It's the replacement for Kensington locks. It's what gets used up for Kensington locks. Uh, that's uh, volume up and down. And that is power. Interesting. I expected power on top, but they put power on the side. Okay. Now, going around the side here, uh, nothing really interesting, just vents. And then over here, we have uh, USB 3.1. Type C, USB 3.1 Type C. Uh, in so it's the round, new, modern USB connector. This one in particular is labeled as uh, supporting display port out. So that's, you can add monitors onto that. Uh, it's also possible that these are Thunderbolt. It depends on what you order. This is uh, HDMI, and this is another 3.1 USB. On the front, there's a little power light. And uh, an interesting little thing is right here, that tells you whether your microphone is on or not, that little light that's right there on the keyboard. Okay, so now we're going to uh, flip it over and we're gonna pull it apart. So I'm gonna use a standard uh, Phillips tip. Uh, this is on a smaller screwdriver because it's just easier to handle, but I would imagine a green handled uh, one would work just fine. So let's just pull this apart. Uh, we'll start up here. I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to see her and watch me. Okay, so I have all of the screws loosened up. None of them come out. There's probably a little uh, cloth washer on the other side that holds them in. So now I've got to look around the edge for a pry point, which I don't see. So I'm probably just going to have to yank on one of these corners. Yeah, that looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. So this is going to be a bit tricky. So I'm going to try to pull the screw out actually, and see if it'll pull a see if it'll pull it back with it. And it does. There we go. Now, I'm just gonna grab any plastic card. Um, yes, I have the proper tools for this, but you probably don't, so I'm trying to do this without them. There we go, and you just slide it around. There we go. That's probably enough, there we go, yeah. Now these screws, as I said, yeah, they've got little, well, they're not cloth washers, they're just washers, so. Uh, anyway, so they're in there. This is the typical aluminum, titanium, whatever. Uh, metal that uh, yeah, Dell uses these days. Nothing to, won't be titanium, but um, you know, something nice and strong, sturdy, extra light. So let's go through this. Okay, so here we have the back cover off and let's roll through it. So here we have the M.2 SSD. I'm going to pull this off just so you can see under it because that cladding is, that protective sheet is just a little frustrating to look at. Oops, pull that out a little rough. Let me put that back in. All right, there we go. Now uh, we have speakers there. We have the BIOS battery. That's what keeps track of your settings when uh, the machine is powered off or the battery is dead. Uh, this is a four cell battery. It's the stock battery. I would have preferred the larger one, but I didn't have a choice uh, because this was so much less expensive than a custom build. So I took the uh, what they had in stock. 
Uh, we also have in here the um, uh, Wi-Fi card, and you can see the antenna here goes out. For some reason, it wraps around. Probably not the best design, but it does there. And then up through the hinge, and then that hinge goes into the screen uh, so that it catches uh, the signals in multiple directions. Uh, this uh, slot is if you have a wireless WAN card. Basically, if you have a cellular card, you pop it in there. That's the uh, fan for the CPU. The CPU is under that. Under that, you can remove this by removing this screw, this screw, and I think I think just that screw. I think that's it. No, this one will have to come off too. And this whole heat sink will lift up and slide out. In one of the manuals for the 7390, you will see that this is an expansion slot for memory. Not really expansion slot, it's just a slot for RAM. And it turns out that uh, that is not the case for the two-in-one. The memory that, uh, for this is actually soldered on the board. So there's 8 gig or 16 gig and you cannot upgrade it. You can upgrade it in the 7390 non two-in-one version, but not this version. So that kind of sucks for me, but it is what it is. So we'll move on. Let's look under the battery. So I took out the four screws, which are here, 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 and here. Uh, there's a center screw, but it was from the outside of the chassis. And let's just flip this over so you can see uh, what's in there. And the answer is not a whole lot. So under here, we have a ribbon for the uh, keyboard, a ribbon for the uh, trackpad. This little ribbon right here looks like it goes to the power light at the front. Uh, and that's really about all. It doesn't look like there's much interesting under there at all. So, uh, as I said, so far the only disappointment with this is that I can't upgrade the memory. Okay, so what I want to do now is just show you the hinge. So I'm going to screw this guy back in, screw it all down, flip it over and show you the hinge. This is the two-in-1 model, which is awesome. All right, so let's show you what's interesting about the two-in-one. In case you're wondering, no, I didn't actually screw this back in because I want to take it off after this video is done. So I'm just being lazy. So there's a hinge and you think, okay, I've seen that. Well, that's kind of neat, right? So that folds over, you can tent it. And I can tell you that uh, if you fold this all the way over, well, past about 90 degrees, the keyboard becomes non-responsive. So it basically becomes uh, an awesome tablet. We've had lots of reviews where we've covered styluses for these. They work great. Okay, so I've tried to power it up using the power button here, holding it, nothing worked. So I assume the battery is just dead. So I'm plugging the AC in. Let's see what we get here. Let's see if this will help. We'll let it sit for a few seconds and then we'll power it up. There it is. So backlit keyboard comes up. So I power lights redundant here. Let's just see what we can see. There, I think you get a pretty good view of it there. Okay, something important to do whenever you're bench parking is get rid of any garbage, in particular McAfee, uh, which will no doubt be on here. Well, this is a corporate build. There may not be anything on here. No, there's nothing on here. It's just using Defender, which is awesome. So looking through here, I see there's nothing much to worry about. Yay. Great. Okay, so that's good. So let's go back to home, check those updates. I'll also, while we're waiting for this, I will also go flash the firmware. All right, so this unit was bit lockered from the factory, so I'm unbit lockering it. I'm de bit lockering it. I'm turning bit locker off. I don't know that it affects performance, but for benchmark, I want to make sure that there's nothing in the way. In particular, I'm going to turn off real time protection, which is a bad idea generally, but for benchmarking, it's the only way to go. As usual, we'll speed this up for you. We're going to run this three times and see how it benchmarks out. Okay, so uh, a comparable measure would be the Dell 5490, and it averaged out from last year, from 2018, and it averaged out at 1384. So uh, let's uh, go run some more benchmarks. We're going to run this two more times. In addition, I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi. Turning off the Wi-Fi will have an effect.
Okay, 1417. Well, that just keeps going up. So I'm going to run this one more time, which I don't normally do because normally the third test settles out about an average. Let's just see what this does. Okay, so I, it seems that we're averaging around, let's call it 1400. We've got the, the last few, 1396, 1382. Let's call it 1400. Let's take a very quick look at the spec. So the details here on the CPU, and in particular, this the uh, spec on the uh, disk, because it's an M.2 disk. So it's roughly equivalent to the Dell 5490. That's it. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.